the making of the regional cultures in chapter 9 so in this chapter we will try to discover how the regional cultures got established so the first point is whenever we refer to any person whenever we talk about any person we try to say by the language they speak like for example if you want to talk about the people who stay in tamil nadu we generally use the word tamil he is a tamilian he speaks tamil they are tamil people here we are not talking about the place where they are staying we are telling that they belong to that particular region uh, if we say oriya we are talking about the people who belong to orissa who stay here and then when we talk about the clothing the different dressing styles tamil nadu people have a different dressing style kerala people have a different dressing style now this andhra people have a typical different dressing styles so all these styles are also mentioned on the different types of cloth what they use and coming to the food habits some people are completely like for example let us take kerala people they use coconut oil for their cooking and some people use the different oils so the food habits also differentiate people from one region people to the other region people at the same time poetry the different types of poem styles what we have every region has its own different types of styles music carnatic music so different types of music are there as i gave the example of carnatic music the dancing styles bharatanatyam kathakali kathak so different different styles of dancing are also showing us of that particular place culture so how did these cultures got emerged that we will try to learn in this chapter let us now take for example the emergence of malayalam as a regional language in the present day state of kerala so this can be traced back to the 9th century when they have the cherra kingdom the cherra kingdom of mahodhyayapuram which is in the present day kerala state which was mentioned as the southwestern part of the peninsula the southwestern corner today we have kerala so in the kerala state during the 9th century we have the kingdom called chera kingdom which is of mahodhyayapuram and malayalam is a regional language for them this is the first time a regional language is introduced for the official purposes of the work in the kingdom so the chera kingdom rulers have introduced the malayalam language which will be the official language for all their official works but at the same time they never gave up the sanskrit language which is predominantly found in the indian subcontinent from centuries old so the sanskrit language epics the sanskrit language stories are always translated into the regional language and then got published in the 12th century we have an example for that even in the 14th century also the book name is lalita kalam which is composed by mani pravalan he describes about the importance of the languages stating the word like diamonds and corals which are one he is using for the local regional language the other he is using for the sanskrit language like that the importance of the sanskrit language has never lost its importance or the ground in the indian subcontinent but at the same time they have the new religion being introduced in this part that is uh, not the new religion new language which is being introduced in this part that is the malayalam language which is made as an official language keeping at par with the sanskrit language that's how the malayalam language became the official language during the 9th to 14th century for the chera kingdom people in the mahodhyayapuram that's how people started to get used to the language of malayalam the jagannath cult let us now move from the regional cultures to the religious traditions till now we discussed how the things have changed like how a national language was also accommodating the regional language we have taken the example of the kerala state where the malayalam language has got incorporated into the usage of the people how they started to understand it and the importance of the malayalam language grew during the tenure of the chera rulers and as the time passed now let us now look at the other side how the regional culture got to be recognized as worldwide how the regional tradition got accepted 
for the entire god the cult of jagannath temple at puri which is in the state of orissa the present name of orissa is modified as odisha now coming to understand how the local deity is recognized as a religious custom of the entire religion the example is the local deity at jagannath temple in puri is made up on an wooden image of lord vishnu but later that got to be accepted as lord vishnu's one of the avatars so here a local tribal custom of making their own deity got transformed over a period of time to become the national or the international avatars of vishnu then in the 12th how it got important so much it's not only that the local deity has made it and it got accepted to everyone it is the deity which got to be made and which was accepted by the rulers of that time the rulers portrayed it as they are recognizing it now once the ruler started to recognize this then it has to become accepted by the people slowly all of them accepted later whoever rulers tried to occupy that place all of them started to get acceptance of this or whoever the new ruler tries to come and occupy that place started to gain control over that particular place and occupy that particular place or establish their control over that particular center so that once you gain the control over that particular place the people will automatically accept your rule that's how people started and the ruler started to try to gain control over the places now let us see here in the 12th century anant varman the ruler wanted to build a temple for his devotional love towards puri jagannath that is purushottama jagannath at puri and later it was followed by in 1230 by ananga bhima of 3 ananga bhima 3 who declared himself as he is the deputy of the god and surrendered himself unconditionally to god so all these things proved that the rulers highlighted the customs of the local traditions which later on gained ground in the entire area when it emerged to be the center of the pilgrimage now the rulers of orissa who ever are there like for example ananta varma or ananga bhima 3 started to gain ground during that period and later the moguls the marathas the english east india company all these people tried to gain control over that pilgrimage center in order to get control or hold of that particular place so this is how the local deities cult of jagannatha became one of the avatars of lord vishnu the rajput and the tradition of heroism now in the 19th century the britishers used to identify the present day rajasthan state as a region of rajputana because large part of the kingdom is controlled by the rajputs the rajput rulers it is not a new concept here it has been happening from centuries it is around from 8th century onwards we have the rajputs ruling the parts of rajasthan for example we have prithviraj chauhan who was a brave warrior who fought against mahmud of gori and he uphold the tradition of heroism the heroic battles of the rajputanas are recorded as stories and poems and spread across made as specially trained ministrels used to depict them and teach to the next generation people so that they have the braveness and courage and it also be an inspiration to many of them at the same time in the 8th century from onwards we have the ideals and the aspirations of heroism in the society of rajputana in order to carry forward these the bravery how they fought the wars the valiantly they choose to die if they lose the wars they never used to surrender themselves they choose to die or become martyr in the facing the war or the battle so that things has been carried over from one generation to another generation 
it is from the dramas emotions in the dramas they used to depict the emotions the loyalty the friendship the love the valor as well as the anger in different different plays so that people also will understand what are the different emotions that we have especially the rajputana cult or the traditions which they have to follow has been trained to the people through these plays poems stories depicted to the next generation people not only the youth even the women used to be with the husbands and do their part of the heroic life they used to follow the husbands and sometimes if the husband dies fighting in the war they used to give up their lives they used to follow the husbands by paying with their lives like this we have all the rajputana traditions following the tradition of heroism and teaching this brave heart nature to the next generation people through the poems through the stories through a special trained ministrels and through dramas teaching the emotions also to the next generation people that is how the rajputan the rajputs and the rajputana culture started to pass from one generation to the another generation now beyond the regional frontiers how the culture of dance kathak has passed over from one region to the other regions how it went on beyond the regions and became a part of the six classical forms of our country after india gained its independence let us now learn about the story of kathak so kathak the word kathak is derived from sanskrit word katha which means a story so these people there is a special caste people who tell stories so that caste is known as the storytellers in north india and this became very popular during the 15th and the 16th century of the bhakti movement when it was happening so the dance form also became very popular what made it very popular is because of the rise of the bhakti movement in various parts of the country people now started to pray god in different different forms by art by music by dance and the legends of radha and krishna folk plays are played on the name popularly known as ras leela with different gestures of the artist that's how kathak started to become very famous during the 15th and the 16th century time and even the mogal rulers emperors and the nobles in their courts also encouraged the kathakali dance during that period of kathak and not sorry not kathakali kathak then it started to become into two traditions one the different style danced in rajasthan region the other one in lucknow and it is during the tenure of wazid ali shah of awadh it became the most accepted formal form of dancing during that period because for every celebration they used to have the kathak dance there and not only in awadh it went to punjab it went to kashmir it went in the bihar and in the madhya pradesh regions also everywhere they started to practice and portray the gestures in the dance form of kathak and disfavor by the british as usual as a common phenomena for every indian tradition and indian custom the british is always are in favor of them a disfavor of them so british has started to disfavor the dance of kathak also but as the local kings the courts adored the dance of kathak it remained one of the important dance forms and india after it gained its independence became the part of the six classical forms which are in india as the kathak dance forms so the story of kathak started as a small particular caste group who are experts in storytelling somewhere in north india but as the bhakti movement started to spread to every corner we have seen bhakti movement spreading like from kerala to in the entire rajasthan gujarat everywhere till mirabai story so in the entire indian subcontinent we have the bhakti movement reviving itself so in the 15th and the 16th century the kathak started to gain its dominance over the indian subcontinent 
The legends of Radha Krishna were played at the folk place with different gestures of the artist famously known as Rasalila. Not only the rulers, the Mughal emperors who are non-Hindu rulers also acknowledged the Kathak dance and used to make them to do in their own courts and in the nobles' courts. It was divided into two traditions, one which is followed in Rajasthan, the other one which is followed in Lucknow. So it became two parts now and later it became very famous with Vazi Alid Shah making it a formal dance practice every for every celebration which he has in his court. It is in the Punjab, later it spread to Punjab, Kashmir, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. So the entire Indian subcontinent started to get the dance of Kathak form. But during that period, in the 19th century, Britishers were completely disfavor of this dance form. And as usual with all the Indian customs, they are in disfavor. Though Britishers are in disfavor, the Indian rulers, Indian kings, Indian princes followed and practiced this one and encouraged these dance forms in their courts and it became part of the six classical forms after India became independent. Now, moving on to understand the tradition of the miniatures, the paintings, how did they become so famous? First, the miniatures started with, as the name suggests, they are the very small paintings what we have available. During that period, they used to draw large paintings. So, different to them, we have small paintings, those are miniatures. Mini means small, small sized paintings, whatever we have that are known as miniatures. So, these miniatures are drawn with watercolors, generally on a cloth or on a paper. So, once they are drawn with their beautiful colors and they are very beautiful, the most beautiful miniatures are found in western part of our country that is western India and these are encouraged by the Mughal emperors like Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan patronize the artists who can paint very well these miniatures and what they used to do the paintings? They used to paint the court scenes, the scenes of the battle, the scenes of the bravery, the scenes of discussions, the scenes of the social life other important aspects of the social life. All these aspects are given in these miniatures. So these are patronized by the Mughal emperors when they were at the pinnacle of their power. But as the time passed, they used to exchange these gifts with the other emperors whenever the situation comes or when they meet the new emperors or the other emperors. But these painters started to move out of the Mughal court because the Mughals started to lose their control over the kingdom and regional kingdoms started to emerge. When the regional kingdoms started to emerge, these painters started to move towards the regional kingdoms and regional kingdom courts like the Deccan courts and the Rajput courts. When they reached the Deccan courts and the Rajput courts, there they need to preserve the Mughal tradition as well as they need to uphold the Deccan culture and the Rajputana culture. So they started to make a new style, preserving the Mughal style as well as the Deccan's style of painting. And this is also famous not only in the western part of India, but also in the Himalayan foothills region. It is during the 17th century, this art got transformed and developed into a form called Basholi. And the famous Basholi painting is Bhamadatta's Rasmanjari. So Bhamadatta's Rasmanjari was one famous one. The other one is Nadir Shah's invasions in 1739 AD. People now as they started to move from the major plain areas to the other areas to show the uncertainty of the kingdom also. They used to do the paintings. So that gave development of a new style of painting that is the Kangra school of painting or colors. And these paintings were generally used the colors like cool blues or greens. And it's not only that the artists used to do the paintings, but it's the men and women of the society, of the kingdom also, used to do paintings on pots, on the walls, on the uh, cloth, or on the floor also. Like this, everyone in the kingdom started to practice this miniature art. So the miniatures, which as the name suggests, it is the small sized painting, it is drawn with a watercolor, generally on a cloth or a paper. Then 
it, the most beautiful collections of miniature are found in the western part of india these are patronized by the mughal emperors like akbar jahangir shah jahan then we have the court scenes what they depict is the court scenes the scenes of battles and the scenes of social life and they used to exchange these as gifts when they meet the new rulers they used to now the painters start to move out of the mughal court why did the painters move out of the mughal court the painters started to move out of the mughal court because the mughals started to lose their charisma and control over the kingdoms and regional kingdoms started to develop so they started to move towards the deccan region and the rajputana courts where they drew on the style of the mughals for what they are already habituated and accustomed to do that and they also upholded the tradition of the deccans as well as the rajputana courts customs and other than the western part of india we also have the miniatures collection found like in the himalayan foothills region and it is during the 17th century this art got transformed into the basholi the famous basholi sir brahmadatta's rasamanjari and nadir shah's invasions of 1739 ad and kangra school of painting all these things the paintings were drawn and gave a new style of painting where you can see the color of the trees plants and everything the colors are generally cool blue and cool green men and women used to have their pots walls floors and cloth used their art of painting them on the pots on the walls on the floor and on the cloth which are are preserved are preserved is a fantastic collection which are are gone are gone in the vein the parts of the history so this is the information what we have about the miniatures if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus